in the chapter of atomic structure, there are three or four key parameters which one needs to understand before we proceed. The first one that you have studied in your school and your classes, that is the Rutherford's model, followed by the application of the Bohr's model. In our ITJ syllabus, the part where we will be reflecting mainly is the derivation on the outcome of the Bohr's model, the drawback of the Bohr's model, followed by the wave-particle duality, which de Broglie and Atta found out, the electronic configuration, Schrodinger wave equation in brief, the quantum numbers, and ultimately followed by the electronic configuration and photoelectric effect. Now in Rutherford's atomic model through the alpha scattering experiment, all of you know that a nucleus of the atomic system consists of a very small part called the nucleus where most of the positive charge resides and outside the nucleus in different orbits the electrons keep on rotating. But the Rutherford's model is not free from any disturbance. It has a major drawback which led to the development of the Bohr's theory. That is when an electron revolves around a charged particle that is a nucleus, due to the emission of the process, energy is continuously emitted. And electron it was observed that energy was directly proportional to the radius. So after completion of a circle or full lapse, if the energy is released, then the next energy level will be lower. And to maintain an equilibrium, the radius will also shrink. And eventually, the electron will spiral on the nucleus. That will make the system highly unstable. To overcome that, Bohr's put forward three postulates. First postulate, of the infinite number of orbits around the nucleus, the electrons will rotate or revolve, what do we say? in those orbits whose angular momentum is equal to NH by 2 pi. And these orbits where the electrons will rotate are known as stationary orbits. And when an electron jumps from a lower level to a higher level or a higher level to a lower level, always energy is either emitted or absorbed and the difference is proportional to the frequency of the incident light. That is delta E or E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu or Hc by lambda. Now from the Bohr's theory we can come to the derivation of radius, velocity and energy of an electron. Let us consider an electron here. It is at a distance r from the nucleus. It is having a charge E. It is revolving with a tangential velocity of V around a nucleus whose radius from the electron is r and having a charge of Z E where Z is the number of protons. For the electron to stably rotate along its orbit, the centrifugal force mv square by r should match the Coulombic force of attraction z square by r square. K is a constant which is introduced to take care of the medium. The value of k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton Coulomb square meter. Now, in this derivation, mv square by r equal to kz square by r square, we also know that from Bohr's theory, mvr equal to nh by 2 pi. And therefore, from these two derivations, we can write v square is equal to, from this part, we can write v square is equal to kz square by mr and from here v square becomes equal to n square h square 
but pi 4 pi square m square r square. As both are v square, both are equal. And from this, we can easily calculate the value of r. And mm -hmm. r from here, this m r m r gets cancelled, m square r square was there. One r will remain, so r will become equal to m square h square divided by k z square into 4 pi square m. And if we take the value except n, n is the orbit number and z is the atomic number, and the other values are constant. So we can write this r is equal to capital K into n square by z. And I'm putting the values of electron charge, pi and mass and Planck's constant, the value comes out to be r is equal to 0 0.53 into n square by z. Now for hydrogen, z is equal to 1 and if it resolves in the first orbit, n is also equal to 1. So the radius of the first orbit for hydrogen, r naught, is equal to 0 0.53 angstrom. For other orbits, the relation goes like this, r is equal to r naught into n square by z. Now if somebody asks you calculate the radius of the third orbit of lithium 2 plus because Bohr's theory is applicable for ions which are like hydrogen that is one electron in the outermost shell. So as it is lithium 2 plus z will be equal to 3, third orbit n will also become equal to 3. 9 by 3 becomes 3 that means Rn will be equal to twice R naught and R naught is equal to 0.53 from where we can solve it directly. Next, we can come to the derivation for velocity. Now, we know that MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. So, V will be equal to NH by 2 pi MR. So, this will be equal to, if I put the value of R, NH, 4 pi square M, KZ square, by 2 pi m n square h square. I am just putting the value of r. We simplify to k z square by n h. So we can clearly see n and z are the variables that I have and the other values are constant. Therefore v comes out to be equal to the constant which comes out to be 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 is a constant value meter per second meter per second into z by n. I have to just remember the value along with z by n or n by z. So velocity is equal to z by n. From here any IIT, J or any DC question can come like this. Calculate the velocity of an electron which is in the third stationary state of helium plus ion. Helium plus ion means z is equal to 2. Third stationary state means n equals to 3. So the value will come out to be constant. That is 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 into 2 by 3. Now in one exam, instead of asking stationary state, they said that same question, calculate the velocity of an electron of helium plus ion in the third excited state. Excited state is one state ahead of the stationary state. So if I say third excited state, then n becomes equal to 4. That means here the ratio would have been 2 by 3. It should have been 2 by 4. From this we can calculate the velocity. We can also calculate the frequency of the electron revolving in any orbit. The formula is frequency of an electron revolving in the nth orbit. Fn is a symbol is equal to Vn divided by 2 pi Rn, where Vn is the velocity of the electron in the nth orbit and Rn is the 
radius of the electron in the inner orbit. So this both the values can be calculated from knowledge of Z and M. Because as we have discussed, velocity is equal to constant into Z by N and radius was proportional to N square by Z. So we can clearly say Fn is inversely proportional to N cube, that is a orbit number for the same atom. Same atom means when Z is equal. Similarly, we can also calculate the time period of an electron revolving in the nth orbit. That comes out to be Tn is equal to 2 pi Rn divided by Vn. So from this we can say Tn is directly proportional to N cube. And as far as the last part, energy derivation is concerned, the energy of any electron is a summation of kinetic plus potential energy. Kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. As we know, mv square by r equal to kz square by r square. From that, half mv square comes out to be equal to kz square by 2r. And what is potential energy? Suppose here is a nucleus and here is the electron. Now, if I have to transfer the electron from this radius to infinite, then I have to do work against the attractive force. And if I have to do work against the attractive force, then whatever work will be done will be stored up here in the form of energy. So if we suppose the distance from here to infinite is broken into very small fragments dr, dr and dr, then the work done is equal to force into displacement. And if I integrate it from limits r to infinity, the value comes out to be minus k z square by r. So potential energy is minus k z square by r. From which the value totally comes out to be minus k z square by 2r. And if I put the value of r, the ultimate expression of energy becomes equal to minus 2 pi square m k square e to the power 4 z square by n square h square. And apart from z and n, the other parts are constant. So we can say energy is equal to a constant into z square by n square. And the value of constant put in the respective values comes out to be 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules per atom into z square by n square. And in electron volt unit comes out to be 13.6 electron volt, all in minus energy, values are in minus, into per atom, obviously, into z square by n square. So, for hydrogen, in its first orbit, z is always equal to 1. So, in the first orbit, the energy will come out to be equal to minus 13.6. That means the energy of hydrogen in the first orbit is equal to minus 13.6. If you go to the second orbit for hydrogen, Z is again equal to 1, so it will be minus 13.6 divided by 4, which comes out to be minus 3.4 EV. Like that for third orbit, it should be minus 13.6 divided by 9, so on. Now, if an electron jumps from level, is in level 1, and again it is in level 2, so we can calculate the energy as E2 and E1. And suppose it jumps from 2 to 1. So the difference of energy E2 minus E1 will be equal to 2 pi square m k z square e square by h square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. And if we write E2 minus E1 at ac by lambda, then 1 by lambda will become equal to 2 pi square m k e square by ch cube into z square. The bracket term remains the same. And this 1 by lambda is referred, referred to as wave number symbolized as nu bar. So nu bar become equals to this value which is a constant quantity known as the Rydberg constant r into z square. 1 by 
in one spread minus one by a two square. This is the formula for wave number with the n one and n two. From this, if anybody wants to convert this into energy, we know nu bar is equal to one pi lambda. So if we multiply this by eight c, we can arrive at this conclusion. So we can also write e is equal to r z square into eight c. One by n one square minus one by n two square. Now we all know that Wittbach constant is a constant quantity, but it has been observed that Wittbach constant, although it apparently seems to be constant because it all involves term of pi, k, h, and small m, it has been observed that Wittbach constant varies from atom to atom. Why? Because during our derivation, we have taken the mass of the nucleus to be mass of the electron to be small m, and we have assumed that the nucleus is at rest. This assumption is only valid if the nucleus is of finite infinite mass. But for a finite mass of nucleus, it has been observed that the, both the nucleus and the electron revolve around a common center of mass. That means, in case of Finite mass of the nucleus. The picture should be shown like this. This is the mass of the nucleus. This is a line joining it. This is the mass of the electron. And P is the point where we have the common center of mass. And therefore, it has been suggested to get the concept clear. The entire distance is supposed to be small r. We should replace the small m, that is the mass of the electron, by the reduced mass. Which takes care of the mass of the nucleus as well as the mass of the electron. Whereas capital M is the mass of the nucleus and small m is the mass of the electron, which can be written like this: capital M divided by one plus capital M. Or we can do like this: keep the small m intact, keep the small m intact, divide the entire equation by capital M. So this will become small m divided by capital M. So what will happen? The equation that we have, if you look at the equation, e2 minus e1 or h c by lambda or 1 by lambda, whatever was coming out, was equal to be a larger fraction consisting of 2 pi square m k e square by c h cube. This was the Rydberg constant, capital R. Now if this m comes along with this. So this Rydberg constant will become 2 pi square m will be there, k e c h q will be there. In addition to that, we'll have 1 plus small m by capital M. So if you take one's hydrogen and if you take one's deuterium, this part will same. But as the nucleus mass of deuterium is more than that of hydrogen, so the Rydberg constant of hydrogen will be different, not equal to the Rydberg constant of deuterium. But if the concept of reduced mass is not brought into picture, then this factor will not be involved. Only small m will be involved. And as the small m is the mass of the electron, which is same for hydrogen as well as for deuterium, we do not observe any change.